the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather this day to celebrate our God in word and in sacrament, let us open our hearts to his reconciling wounds. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, but he's had mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father who have received from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth is the people of the Lord. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we be glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God, you do take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and have received adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet is Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, 
Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, Lord, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massah in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to one to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth, about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ.
By the way, just a note from our sponsors, there are these books on the, at the doorway. You're still welcome to take one with you, but just remember, if you take it, you have to keep it. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. So if you wanted to follow the Sunday readings or anything like that, you are welcome. They're on the table right out here. You might have seen them. They're free. Because I don't think we're going to be using them too much before the end of the liturgical year, sadly. Um, but today, as we continue through Matthew's Gospel, we uh, um, skipped a chapter, and now we're into the 18th chapter. And so he's continuing to develop, as is his faith community. And of course, like any faith community or any group of people, we always need to keep in mind, if we are Christian, that, that the first grace or the first gift of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is reconciliation. I think we need to remember that. Reconciliation. That Almighty God has reconciled us to himself by the incredible grace of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, particularly his passion and his death, of course. And so we need to remind ourselves of that because that's exactly uh, what is at the heart of these verses that we're going to be hearing at Matthew's uh, community. Don't forget that we are hearing the gospel as it is lived and developed by a faith community in the first century. And so they had no greater insights, actually, than we do. We benefit from their insights. And so the greatest, greatest and first grace of God is reconciliation. Don't forget, he loved us already. He loved us already. So love is not the grace of the passion, death, and resurrection. It is perhaps the cause of it. But don't forget, he already loved us. And we were not able to kind of get it into our thick heads that he loved us. And now what does that love mean? It means something different for all of us, but it means something the same for all of us. Brandon, could you come here a minute, please? They're usually here at the first Mass on Sunday. So how lucky are you today? <laughs> I just found out he goes to Tunkhannock and he goes one day school, one day, hold these please. He goes to school one day a week, how's that? Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. The other days he's gonna be working with his father, isn't that a dream about it? I want you to think about this. In our lives, in all of our lives, we're all human, right? And because we are human, we don't have the great insight that we like to think we have. We don't have the patience that we like to think we have. We don't have all the stuff that we really think we have, right? I'm not saying anything bad about us. I'm speaking about myself. I'm not as patient as I think I am. I'm not as understanding as I think I am. I'm not any of those things. I might be somewhere in the ballpark, but I'm really not as great as I think I am. I'd like to think we're all pretty much the same. <laughs> And when push comes to shove, that's what this gospel's about, we have to begin to ask ourselves. I, I want you to consider just for a moment, I'm gonna use these books for something different. Don't forget these are the word of God too. Look at these books here. Now I'm pretty free right now, right? My arms are pretty free. I have two of these books, that's not so bad to manage, is it? Now I want you to think that these books are something that's unreconciled in my life. I had an argument with somebody at work and I've never spoken to them again. Isn't that loving of you? <laughs> now, I'm not saying that that happens to anybody here. I'm just pulling it out of the air. Um, this one might be that I really don't understand something about my brother or my sister, and so I just don't go there. Isn't that loving and kind? Now, what do these things do to a, a family or to a community? 
It's an obstacle. These are obstacles. Now, where do they come from? My humanity, my inability to understand, to see, to, under, to, to really comprehend, whatever you want to call it. My inability to experience the passion and death of Jesus Christ. Because don't forget, we just heard how Jesus is going to define himself. And how does he define himself? I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be handed over to death. And I am going to die. Remember that little verse last week? And what did those disciples say? Peter first. Oh, no, you're not. We still are saying, oh, no, you're not. But friends, he did die. He was betrayed. He was humiliated. He experienced the dredge of all of our nasty humanity. Did he not? He did. Let's not forget the stations of the cross. They actually were real stations. They actually happened to the author of life. These things are just not nice things up there. We've romanticized them, yes, but these, really thing, these are really things that happened to him. The way of the cross, that was a bloody thing. Seeing everybody, that was a bloody, humiliating thing. Hanging on the cross, can't get worse than that. Now, when I refuse, in any way, shape, or form, to live that, I refuse to surrender myself to Christ. And so I am holding back, I am holding back the grace that God has gifted me in the Passion, Death, and Resurrection. Now, these days, we have a lot of division in our life, don't we? We get division all over the place, don't we? This poor guy can't even go to, he's a senior, by the way, he can't even go to his senior year. How about it? Now, how long is it going to take before I have a couple of these obstacles before I could barely move my arms. I have to hold these things. And we hold these things. We hold them very close to our vest, don't we? Because I don't want anybody to see my stuff. I don't want anybody to see the stuff that I am holding on to and I refuse to let go of. I'm refusing to let go of these. These are killing me. They're killing him right now but they're killing me because I am embracing these. I cannot, I cannot because I will not let them go. Because I believe that it's safer holding on to these rather than letting them go and it holding on to Christ. And so as I get older, I have lots of, old, of new ones. I got lots of this stuff. I don't like what's going on in the world today. I don't like the pandemic. I believe that it's this. I believe that it's that. And none of us know what it is. Okay? I'm not taking sides. All I'm saying is that I'm experiencing this and I think it might be like you. I don't like what's going on in the government today, in any government. I just don't understand what's going on in the church these days. Let's not forget that. We certainly have screwed things up, haven't we? So we've got a lot of reconciliation to do. Before too long, these are getting pretty heavy. They're getting pretty heavy. Now, I'm going to take all of these from you, Brandon, and I'm going to thank oh, thank you. Thank you very much. That'll fix him. He won't be back at 4 o'clock. <laughs> so look at what I have here. I got a whole lot of stuff. I got a whole lot of stuff. And before too long, I don't want to go anywhere and I don't want to do anything. Because I absolutely can't. This is tiring, carrying this all along. This is absolutely tiring. And it is a burden. I can't really embrace anyone. I really can't be open to anyone or anything because I have these obstacles right in front of me. What kind of life am I living? Certainly not a redeemed life. 
let's face it, certainly not the life of a Christian, because the Christian is called to what? Live the life following Christ. And what did Christ tell us in Matthew's Gospel last time? Oh, Jesus is going to do this, that, and the other thing. And we're saying, by my actions, oh no you're not, because I certainly won't. That's what we're saying to Jesus. God forbid, Lord, that you suffer any of these, because you can't do that because I won't do that, is the rest of the story I could use those words, is the rest of the story of humanity. That's me and you. Lord, you can't suffer those things because I will not do it. To be a Christian means to what? Surrender to life and to love. To self-surrender. Now, how do you expect that I'm going to self-surrender to these? How am I going to bow down? If I were to bow down, I'm not going to get back up. Think about it. What are the things that you carry? I could put a name on each of these things. What are the things that you carry? Might not be anything like this. Might not be any of this. And I pray to God that it's not. But when we continue to hear Matthew's Gospel, I am called to examine this in my own life and to what? Share this with you. This is what Matthew is talking about. So when we need to be reconciled with someone, as the Gospel tells us today, it first has to start with you and you. Look in the mirror and be reconciled. Look in the mirror and pray for the grace of his passion to be reconciled first to yourself, you with you. Then you will begin to see it will melt before you these moments that you need to be reconciled then with God and then with each other. That's what it means to be a Christian, to be first a disciple of Jesus Christ, to embrace his passion, his death, and his reconciliation. And just remember that the first grace of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is reconciliation. He died for us. He first loved us. That's got to be the case. And because he loves us, he died for us and to show us how we can live with ourselves and each other. So he took all of the unreconciled stuff in the history of the world, opened his arms, and gave it to God. He let go of it all and gave it to God. And so we come around this table once again. And I'm going to ask you to look at these books. And I'm going to ask you, what do you think you need to be reconciled with? What are you going to put on this altar today? What are you going to put up here to return to God and say, Lord, by your grace, your grace alone, do I have the strength to place my incompleteness upon this altar so that I might be filled with your grace. Because when I am filled with all of this stuff, I have no room for grace. Now I do. Now I do. And so will you. Together, let us profess the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the boundless mercies of our God, let us now open our hearts in these prayers of petition. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may they who labor to faithfully share the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil servants who strive to end racial inequity and violence, may local leaders lead efforts toward reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffered a painful loss in the events of September 11, may they find comfort in the promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor in unhealthy and life-threatening situations, may employers strive to improve their workers' conditions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all workers in the vineyard of the Lord, may they find joy and fulfillment in their calling, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially John and Eleanor Binker, Jesse Sardi, Wilk family, Louis Sibia, and for all whose salvation is known to God alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those hospitalized, our loved ones in heaven, the intentions in our parish intention book, and the intentions held in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, as we open our hearts before you, we trust that you will continue to strengthen and guide us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who gave us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by our partaking of this sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us, the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in our disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we now acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we we eat eat this bread and and drink this cup, we we proclaim the death of the Lord until until you come again. Therefore, As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles Peter and Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer <clears throat> each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
this time. Before a blessing, I certainly do want to extend to each of you a happy holiday. I hope that you have, um, I was going to say a, a nice, maybe a barbecue or something. I don't know. Can't believe summer's over. I guess summer is over. I'm waiting for it to begin. So have a nice holiday and I guess have some rest, maybe. Maybe we don't need any more rest. Anyway, God bless. My friends, the Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless us, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Father Christ.